Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, and just wanted to quickly, quickly comment on the Warriors' win over the Indiana Pacers. This was the game on the road trip that was the big question mark. The Pacers had come in to San Francisco at Chase Center and pretty handily beat the Warriors. That was the game where we saw a box and one on Steph because no one else was a threat. But this game, we did not see that. Not sure if that's because they just decided not to do it, or most likely because Oubre has been playing well. Wiggins, for the most part, has been having a decent, consistent season on the offensive end, and they're just a better team. So it's harder to box in one a team where there are more viable options. This was a game that the Warriors really, really, really needed to kind of forget the first two games of this road trip, the first two games against the Magic and then the Hornets. Those were games that were very gettable. So getting the last two and coming out of this road trip two and two is pretty significant. There are now three games above 500. Can they? Will they get to four games above 500? In San Francisco, the Warriors looked a little overmatched by the Pacers the first go around. And now they actually looked like the better team overall. They shot like garbage. They shot five for 26 from three. Steph was one for 11. Oubre was one for four. Wiggins was 0 for four. Basemore was one for four. Wiggins in general had a bad shooting game. He was five for 13. He had 15 points though. Oubre seven for 15. Again, continuing his better shooting month. And he had 17 points. Steph, 7 for 21, 9 for 10 from the free throw line. In general, Steph, he never seemed fully right. He got popped in the face and he had to have like a couple of cotton swabs or cotton balls stuffed into his nose or whatever. I don't know if he had a bloody nose. That's what I'm assuming. And his shot never, never started clicking at that point. If you just had a few of his shots go in, then this game is probably a different story. And he also was throwing some pretty bad passes. His passes were getting kicked, deflected, had a couple passes stolen. I don't know, maybe he's still kind of recovering from whatever kept him out of the Charlotte game and then getting popped in the face might have thrown him off a little bit more. Who knows, but I'm sure he'll be fine down the road. James Wiseman, he had more of a mixed night. He had some dunks, but those bad hands kind of came back a little bit. Steph threw like a behind the back pass and it kind of just went through Wiseman's hands. And then there were a few more passes and a couple more rebounds that just he couldn't handle. He couldn't like get his paws on cleanly. So the only rebounds he got were kind of just obvious gimme rebounds where it's like straightforward bounces off the rim and he's like one of the only people there. One thing you don't see too much is him like fighting somebody for a rebound and actually getting it. That's something I think he really, really needs to work on to get those numbers up. Wiseman in that second unit, Kerr had shuffled up the lineups a little bit again, and he played with the second unit at the beginning of the second quarter and the fourth quarter, and it was a little clunky. The second unit has been having some issues in general, but it seemed like Wiseman was kind of trying to figure out where he fits in in that unit. It also impeded Pascal. This happened when Looney played with Pascal as well. It kind of cluttered things up a little bit, but especially with Wiseman, I felt like he maybe took up a little bit too much space and Pascal needs to get used to that if he's going to keep playing with him. I actually thought that, oh, okay, this Warriors team this year, this is the kind of game that they lose. They're on the road. They foul the hell out of the Pacers in the first part of the fourth quarter and the Pacers are in the bonus with six minutes left. Oftentimes, when it's kind of an even pairing, the team that gets into the bonus, especially when it's so early in the quarter, they have a huge advantage and they can just keep going to the line. And as a matter of fact, that's kind of what happened. The Warriors would build like leads of five, six, seven, and then there would be fouls. Ticky-tack fouls a lot in a lot of cases, but fouls nonetheless. And I actually think that they got away with one at the end of the game. When Indiana had the ball, they were down by four. Sabonis crosses the lane. Ubre kind of slips and undercuts him. And Sabonis, I think his forearm hits Ubre on cheek. And there was no call, no call at all. And 
I was so surprised because the refs have been calling these super, super nitpicky fouls and they let that one go. I was like, oh, wow, thank you for the makeup call. But that was huge because if Sabonis goes to the line, they could potentially be down by two and then the Warriors get the ball, they foul, who knows what happens. But in this case, the Warriors get the ball up by four, Steph gets the ball, automatic two. So they're up by six with just a handful of seconds left. And at that point, that kind of decides the game, to be honest. So this is great. This shows you that the Warriors are actually improving, right? Like before this road trip, you're like, oh, the Pacers, yeah, the Warriors aren't as good as the Pacers, but they are. Granted, TJ Warren isn't playing. Karis LeVert, who they acquired from the Nets and hasn't played with them, wasn't in the game. But, you know, Indiana's still a cohesive, well-coached team. So this is a feather in the Warriors cap. Kelly Oubre Jr., he's growing on me. I still wonder if they'll trade him. I still think if they trade high, if they sell high, they could probably get a decent asset because do they want to spend the money to keep him next year or are they just going to let him walk as a free agent? Either way, they're a prerogative. I guess if you let him walk, you don't have to pay him no matter what, but is there something that you want for him? Will a team offer you a draft pick, a player like Lonzo Ball, who's a restricted free agent that you could match? Or do you just want to see how this team comes together and what happens in the playoffs? See if you can ride it out. Unless Kelly Oubre goes on a really, really bad cold streak again from three-point land, I see him being a net positive for the season at this point because he's clearly learned how to play with Steph a little bit more and that'll just continue. So hey, maybe they want to see what happens. They get in the playoffs. Maybe they upset some teams. Maybe they make some noise and then they call it a day and they're like, hey, wasn't that fun? Good luck with your next contract on your new team. Or do they say, hey, we think we can really, really use you and we will pay you X, assuming we can get fans into the stadium. (laughs) I like the way he plays defense. I like the flair he has. I think it sucks that he can't play in front of the Warriors fans. I mean, he would have been amazing in Oracle. I think people would just feed off of his energy, his dunks, his defense. I mean, and he's a really fast dunker just because his goddamn arms are so long. Like he doesn't have to rise. He just like hops and his arms are already at the rim. One thing I also noticed was Ron Adams was on the bench. And I don't know if he travels with the Warriors on the regular now again, or if he just made this road trip, but that's always a reassuring sight, you know? Also, the NBA released the schedule for the second half of the season. I'll be honest, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I definitely will. We'll see how the Warriors are looking. I think the season runs until May. I'm very curious to see how spread out the games are or if it's going to be continuing at the breakneck pace that it has this season. Anyway, Warriors go back home, play Charlotte, get to see Wiseman versus LaMelo. The Warriors get to hopefully avenge their worst loss of the season, their most painful loss from last weekend, and we'll go from there. All right, that's another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at oaklandwarriors.com, and be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Warrior fan friends. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs. <laughs>